Hi, and welcome to another edition of ProBlind, where we provide the opportunity for you to meet the candidates who want to represent you on city council. Uh, we'd like to thank the supporters of Grassroots Community Network for helping make this possible, and also thank John Doyle for taking time out of his day to spend some time with us. Hi, John. Hi, Reed. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Good to be here. So, uh, you want to be on city council? Yes. Uh, why? Um, I guess the short answer is Aspen's given me a very full, robust life, and I'd like to repay the favor. Um, I, I think Aspen is worth fighting for, and I see outside interests... Uh, taking over the community, and I, th I think the community really should be in control of our community. And how long have you been in the community? My family moved here in 1980 when I was a freshman in college, so I started out coming here during summer breaks and Christmas breaks, and then when I left college, I came here for the proverbial summer before real life, and I never left. Yeah, that's great. Well, how did you make your way here, though? You've got to keep house and home together. And um, well, again, I had a little bit of a foot up because my, my mom and my younger sister lived here, although we're from fairly humble means. Uh, my mom actually lived in employee housing at Castle Ridge when my sister was in high school, and then my mom bought a house down in Carbondale. Um, so when I first got out of college, I just started renting here in town, and... Uh, you know, my, my first few jobs as a full-time resident were working um, in on-mountain restaurants during the ski season and working in restaurants at night. It was kind of a, the classic ski bum lifestyle yeah. in the beginning. How has that evolved? Um, well, it evolved <clears throat> for me. Uh, I moved up to a cabin on the back of Aspen Mountain in 1988 and uh, after a, a year and a half of living up there, a friend of mine who knew I had some artistic ability had seen these photos I had taken of a friend of my dad's carving totem poles in Alaska. He, su he suggested that I carve one for my cabin, and I, I did. And the first one sold for a pretty handsome amount, and I decided that um, waiting tables uh, was going to take a back seat to creating art. That's fascinating, and you've been able to make a living doing that. Pretty much. I mean, I've supplemented my artist income with a variety of other jobs. Um, I've built skis for Phoenix Skis back when we had a factory out at the Airport Business Center. I've driven snowcats for the Aspen Mountain Powder Tours. Uh, I worked for the ski company's recycling program for several years, pulling the recycling off the, off the mountain from the on mountain restaurants and putting it in the correct bins in the bowels of the Little Nell Hotel. Um, I've done a couple construction projects and I've been a, a property manager for several properties. Currently I'm not in construction or property management, but I do feel I've got a fairly diverse employment background that gives me an insight into the problems that our local residents face. Yeah. What do you think, um, what, 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 what of those problems kind of comes to front of mind? I'm sorry? I didn't say that very well. There's no apology needed. I apologize to you. You know, of the problems that local residents are facing, what, what seems to be at the top of the list? For me, I think the price of housing is, is the greatest issue facing local families. Um, I think uh, a lot of our, you know, for instance, um, the West End, you know, is is generally considered kind of a ghost town. Uh, my wife grew up here, and she tells me tales of every, most houses had families. They used to ride horses through the West End, and, and she would keep her horse in a barn across the street. And now... Um, I, I think there are actually more families living in the West End than there were when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. But 
Uh, definitely, there are a lot of second homes that stay dark most of the year. Yeah, how do we bring people back? Um, good question. I think, uh, obviously, as town continues to grow, we can, we'll continue to need more employee housing, whether we like it or not. And I, I think um, having them in town, trying to create employee housing in town is, is the best answer because it'll reduce traffic, uh, less cars on the road, um, and, and just, you know, it's, it's, I think it's uh, an, an issue of um, balance with all the empty second homes. I, I think there should be people living in town to serve those second homes instead of having to travel up and down valley to, to do that. So you see, or you would hope, I suppose, that with your involvement in council that you can make it a kind of more of a, I don't know if integrated is the right word, but a, a more inclusive community that yes. has all different levels of of folks economically exactly able to live here. Mm -hmm. That's a tall order. Yes, it is, uh, especially in our current capitalist society, which we all live in. Yeah, you know, it's been such a um, a difficult problem for well, depending on your perspective, whether it's. 30 or 40 years of, of trying to maintain that yes. with a, a housing program. And it, are you, have you been involved in the housing program? or Not at all. I've been lucky enough to, um, I mean, I rented for a long time. And I got kind of lucky when I started renting uh, cabins on the backside. The going rate was $100 a month, which is pretty hard to beat. Yeah, uh, it was definitely, you know, in the in the beginning, there were sacrifices you made for that cheap rent. Getting, you know, getting to and from town. It's either um, a wonderful or a horrible commute, yeah, depending I mean, on your point of view. Yeah, um, if you have the time, it's wonderful. Yeah, but um, that's so. Yeah, I've benefited from very low rent for a long time, and then I was able to purchase, um, me and my wife were able to purchase a property where my cabin, the, my cabin sits on. Um, so I actually went from being a renter to being an owner, which is still hard for me to believe. Yeah. And that's where you live now? No, uh, actually, I still have the cabin and spend a lot of time up there. I was up there over the weekend. Um, I actually live in a cabin, my, or, I'm sorry, a condominium my wife and I own near the Aspen Ice Garden. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, it, you do kind of have to live in town if you're yes. run for town council. That's a prerequisite. Yeah, running on, living on the backside might be really appealing, but... You do have to be in town. That's quite a transition from living on the backside of Aspen Mountain to living in a condominium in town. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I mean, both are, I'm spoiled because yeah. I have both. And uh, I actually wake up every day knowing how lucky I am right. to live here and, and to have had the experiences I've had. Yeah, so from college, you've, you've lived here um, all the time. Yep, 40 years. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Do you, people have uh, varying, appro or varying notions of how the community has changed for better or worse, and you have this 40-year perspective. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I've been here long enough to see it change from a town into a city. Mm -hmm. um, when I first moved here, there was one stoplight and now there are at least a half a dozen. Um, and, you know, a lot of things, there are a lot of things that have changed for the positive, but I think everybody will agree that traffic has become a huge issue, and a, a large part of the traffic is our construction and development industries, very large trucks, cement trucks, dump trucks, you name it. Um, and. I, 
you know, I don't think the development community is is uh, to blame for that at all. I, I, I think it's uh, just the nature that Aspen's a very desirable place to be and living in a market-based economy, it's a, it's a natural progression. Every resort has the same issues we have, maybe not as on a larger scale as we do, mm -hmm. but we are looked up to uh, around the country for our employee housing programs and our advocacy for the climate and so on. We have been a leader in many areas for a long time and I'd like to see that continue. How, what's your notion of how we would bend that curve, though? The, it, it, you, you, you point out that you know construction and development keeps going forward. Traffic is a problem. Uh, how does one bend that curve? How do, how do you, mm. or is that, am I misreading what you're thinking? Um, well, I, I think there are certain things we can do to help the whole community. In regards to the development community, I think, for instance, the, the landfill. I think it's estimated that roughly 50% of the landfill waste comes from construction and demolition. And so I think we need to look at uh, incentives to re reuse materials. I, I know some people do, but uh, all too often we see businesses and homes scraped and hauled away and buried. Uh, with no effort to to recycle anything. So I think we should incentivize recycling and reusing as much of that building material as possible. Not only saves our landfill, but it helps save the planet um, and reduces our carbon footprint. Um, I'd also, I think uh, RAFTA and our, our um, transportation system is are really one of the finer models in Colorado and maybe in the nation. I think uh, we could keep being a leader in public transportation. Yeah, and all, all that seems to, uh, when I hear it, it's, a, it's addressing the growth that may be inevitable. Uh, do you agree or? Uh, I do, I just think we could do it smarter. Uh, climate. Our climate crisis is real, and I, every single issue that comes before the city council, in my opinion, has an environmental component. And we should, I, I think the city has done an, an exemplary job of addressing climate change, but I also th know we can always do more. Yeah. No, it's true. Um, and if you were, if you are elected, What's it going to look like in a couple of years? Where do you think you'll put your energies? Um, it, it depends on what comes before council, obviously, but my biggest drive is the environment and climate change. I mean, let's face it, our whole economy here in Aspen really is dependent upon a stable climate. And that's, that's why we come here, to ski, to fish, to raft. And, I mean, 50% of of uh, the American West is under extreme drought conditions right now. I'm glad we're getting snow. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, obviously there's some very serious issues. Forest fires, we're seeing them every year in right here in our valley. And it, it's affecting the very air we breathe and, and the sunsets that we see at night. Uh, it, it's a health issue and we need to try to get on top of it. Yeah, it's so it, it, it's so important to you know act on the ground for those sorts of things. But then, how does the little government of Aspen lead in that in that area? I think that it's such a conundrum to me. Um, I, I think just being well informed, uh, and I read a lot, um, and I'm aware that. Building practices are, are generally getting greener. There's a, a new method for making a lower carbon concrete that concrete and steel take a tremendous amount of energy to produce. And there are be between a lower carbon f footprint concrete. Uh, also, there are several high rise timber buildings 
being built around the world, mostly in Scandinavia, but large timber structures, skyscrapers even. Uh, I think I, I just recently read about one that's 13 stories tall. So I, it, it's, it's a fact that using CLTs, cross-laminated timbers, um, are, is a much greener alternative to using steel I-beams. And if we can cut down our energy consumption in producing steel and, and concrete, uh, that saves, I mean, it benefits everyone. So when you were in, in school, is that what you studied, was engineering? Kind of? I, I actually studied art and architecture. And so I, I am still fascinated by architecture and love it, and, and art too. I mean, sculpture is the art form that I produce. And is it exclusively wood? Yes. So as a carver? Yep. That's I have saying. not carved any stone yet. I'd like to give it, <laughs> give it a try because obviously it's longer lasting. Yeah. It's hard on the tools, though. Yes. And sharpening is not my favorite thing to be not doing. Not your favorite thing to do? So do you do your work, if I may ask, on commission or, or how do you? Both, actually. Um, I, I do commissions and then when I don't have any commissions, I do things that I like. I think I'd like to do that might, I would be able to find a buyer for. Yeah. I've dabbled a little bit in ceramics and have always struggled with commissions mm. because you're trying to implement someone else's vision. And, and I, I always worry that, it, you know, it's not my idea. So I can judge whether I achieve my idea it's more difficult for me to judge whether I achieve someone else's notion of what they wanted. It's uh, an interesting line. I mean, some of my clients really want a heavy hand in, in design process. Some people just let me design it and then they'll give me a thumbs up if they like it or a thumbs down if they don't. And if they don't, I go back to the drawing board <clears throat> and figure out something that they will like. Yeah. But, um, I, I prefer working on my own stuff as opposed to commissions. Yeah, I have to admit I do too. Um, how do you, how how do you think you can apply you know that kind of experience to working in that very public arena of town council, city council? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. <clears throat> Wasn't really prepared for it, but I will say that wood carving actually is um, a process of trial and error. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I think trial and error is, is how really government does work or really anything. Um, but you, you have to try things that maybe haven't been tried before mm -hmm. and see if they work. And if they don't, you try something else. So how, 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 do you, how would you kind of in, introduce that into council, you know, that... It's um, not, that's not a very good question. I'll, I'll, I'll take that back. When, and maybe we can talk a little bit more about um, really what you enjoy, what, what you love about the city, the community. Um, well, I'm still thinking about your first question, okay. too. But uh, I, I just want to point out that I will be a member of a five-member team, five member team, and we'll have to work collaboratively. And I think that I do bring that to the table. I, I get along well with others. I've never been fired from a job, and I've had many jobs. Um, I think I'm a team player and a good listener. Yeah. Well, I, I, I certainly think that that's, those are really important skills. Uh, uh, a lot of times I think people forget that, as you said, it's a, it's a group of five people who have to work together to move forward, find some kind of common ground to be able to implement something. And, and actually, I do have the benefit of, I have relationships with most of the city council members. I uh, haven't known Skippy Long, but I've known him for a couple years. L Rachel and I go back at least a couple decades, and Tori and I have been uh, acquaintances for over 
10 mm -hmm. years. He teaches my daughter tennis, and uh, I consider him a friend. Oh, that's good. It's good to be very, you seem very rooted in this community. Um, I have, you know, with my diverse employment background, I've met a lot of people. Yeah. Plus, my family is related to the Willie clan, the owners of the Tyrolean Lodge, real longtime locals, and I've benefited from their circle of friends as well. We've, uh, I mean, I know a lot of people. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and I think that's on a very base level what's so important about the town. I do too. You know, it's is, community. Is that, is that sense of community amongst all those folks. Great. Indeed. So, housing is something very important to you. The environment's very important to you. Um, these are such difficult problems. Yes, you know, they and, are. And, and managing them going forward. And I'm, I'm trying to think of how to draw out from you your thoughts about that or concerns about that. Well, I think that our workers deserve to reap the benefits of living in town, just mm -hmm. like second homeowners. Um, and I know that this isn't a problem that's just an Aspen problem. It's New York City, it's San Francisco, big and, and small cities across the United States. But uh, I think there needs to be equity as far as, uh, I, I think the people that work to clean the houses and build the houses uh, deserve to have the same ease of access to everything that Aspen has to offer. Yeah. Is there any alternative than a, a very large public program to be able to do that? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'd love to explore it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, our biggest problem, I think, I feel with employee housing is there are so few parcels available to, to build employee housing on. Um, and the, and the cost of that land is prohibitively expensive. And that's the biggest um, hold up to our housing program. But I know we can find more in, uh, innovative solutions because we have before. Yeah. Um, for instance, um, one of my constituents pointed out that the, the city owns the recycling center property, which now that we're going into curbside recycling, um, that recycling center isn't going to be used as much as it has been. And again, the city already owns it. Right. So there's a huge hurdle that's already been eliminated. Why not put a, a small amount of employee housing right there in the center of town, on a bus line, pedestrian friendly. People wouldn't even need to use their cars, or, or very minimally. Uh, and there, there are several other ideas I have that uh, don't know if, if it'll come to fruition, but I, I have some ideas about some other places in town where the possibility of affordable housing could happen. Yeah, the kind of infill notion of, of taking available lands and, and I don't think uh, uh, density is such a evil word, but it does kind of increase the density. Of, it does. Of, things of course. downtown. And we've seen that with the, the proposal on East Cooper, the former Sioux Lum property. Um, you know, the neighbors are upset about it. Um, you know, and, I, and I, I understand their point of view, but in a way, I, I don't think it's, it's fair to our workers to say, yeah, we like employee housing as long as it's at the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that, that to me seems very unfair. Yeah, and this notion of an urban growth boundary that, that uh, like you, when I first got here, it really was a, a town. Mm -hmm. And then there was this large separation to the airport. Right. You know, and then this, and it, we lived down Valley, it was a long distance call. Right. Um, I kind of harken back to those days sometimes. And, and That's and, right, it was long distance yeah. to Glenwood. Crazy. Um, so now, now it is a very urban environment um, through much of the Valley and very linked. 
Yep. Um, well, it, it, another version of a future Aspen is that it isn't a standalone. It's a much a participant in a much larger community. We are the top of the heap in this valley, and what we do in Aspen affects people all the way to Rifle mm -hmm. and all the way over McClure Pass into Paonia. No, it's true. It's pretty connected. Yes. Yeah. So, still want to do it? I do. I, I think uh, I can make a difference, and um, uh, I'm, I'm excited to give it a shot. Again, I, I have good relationships with, I think, just about everybody on city council. I have not actually met Ward yet, although we had a really good conversation yesterday on the phone. Um, I also know most of the county commissioners very well, and I think, I think the city and county should be working closer together. They used to be much closer until they were separated several years ago, but I think we need to collaborate more with the county on, on what our shared visions are for the future of this whole valley yeah. or in our part of it. One of the very unique things uh, when I came to the valley in 89 was that, uh, I believe it was seven, there were seven joint departments between the city and the county. I thought that was extraordinary. Right. And had never really seen that before. And created this seamless situation where you went to the building department, you didn't need to know where the boundary was right. to, to go to the building department. And personally, I miss that, but no, it, it makes so much sense, really. I mean, I, under, I, I can understand why they were separated, just to simplify things, I guess. I'm sure there were many more important reasons than that, but it just makes sense to me that by having them together, they could collaborate more and have, a sh again, a shared vision for right. what we're trying to achieve. That sounds wonderful. We only have a little bit less than a minute left, and I want to make sure that I give you a chance to, did I miss anything that you want to say? And uh... um, I guess all I really want to add is uh, I moved here to ski. Uh, also, my family was here. Um, and I still love skiing. It, it's, I'm passionate about it. It's a huge part of my life. And as a result of all the time I've spent in the backcountry, I have seen firsthand the changes that climate change is wreaking on our planet. And I'd like to do more about it. I participated in that global climate march with my daughter uh, roughly a year and a half ago, and it, was, it felt empowering. It was a beautiful day, and it felt like we could m really make a change and make a difference. And uh, about six months ago, I asked my daughter what she thought had changed, and she looked at me and she said nothing. Hmm. And that actually is probably the biggest reason I'm running. Well, good. How old is your daughter? She's 13. Wonderful. Seventh grade at the Aspen Public Middle School. All right. Well, John, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today, and I hope that people get to know you a little bit better, and good luck in the upcoming election. Thank you so much, Rita. It was okay. a pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure meeting you. And this concludes another episode of Probe Line, brought to you by the fine supporters of uh, Grassroots Community Network, and we appreciate you tuning in and uh, viewing the show. Thank you.